If the patient is already horizontal and unconscious, or if oral intubation is planned, the patient's position should be supine with the head in the sniffing position. If the patient cannot tolerate lying flat, the patient may remain sitting for blind nasal intubation. Check the endotracheal tube cuff for leaks by inflating and deflating the balloon with 10 milliliters of air. Check the laryngoscope to ensure the light is functioning. Pre-oxygenate the patient with bag mask ventilation. Have an assistant apply cricoid pressure using the Selic maneuver. Remove the oral airway. Grasp the laryngoscope in the left hand. Instruct the awake patient to open the mouth as widely as possible. In the unconscious patient, place the thumb and second fingers of the right hand on the right upper and lower molars and open the mouth with a scissor-like motion. Gently place the laryngoscope blade in the right side of the mouth, taking care to avoid damaging the teeth. Sweep the tongue to one side of the oral cavity while advancing the laryngoscope blade toward the glottis. Position the end of the blade under the epiglottis or in the vallecula, depending on the type of blade used. Avoid cocking the left wrist backward and levering the blade on the teeth. Lift the laryngoscope handle straight up till the vocal cords are visualized. Pass the styleted tube with the cuff deflated into the right side of the mouth and through the vocal cords. Remove the stylet as the cuff passes through the vocal cords. Then place the endotracheal tube so that the cuff is just distal to the cords and cannot be seen between or above the cords. Inflate the balloon with 5 to 10 milliliters of air and hold the tube firmly in place at the lips. Now, place an end tidal CO2 monitor in the breathing circuit between the tube adapter and the ventilator bag. Gently give several breaths. Watch the chest for expansion. Check a minimum of six breaths for measurement of CO2 on the CO2 monitor. This is to ensure that CO2 returned to the breathing circuit has a pulmonary source and is not insufflated air from the stomach. Listen for bilateral breath sounds over the chest and for an absence of sounds over the gastric area. If all clinical signs point to intubation of the trachea, the assistant may then release the cricoid. Tape the tube securely and carefully place a bite block in the awake patient to avoid obstruction of the tube from biting. Obtain a chest x-ray to check endotracheal tube placement. If more than one intubation attempt is necessary, the patient should have a 100% oxygen bag mask airway re-established between attempts. If the esophagus is intubated inadvertently, in cases where the vocal cords are difficult to visualize, it may be helpful to leave the endotracheal tube in place as a marker to avoid repeated esophageal placements. Inadequate mouth opening is the most common mistake making laryngoscopy difficult as well as greatly increasing the risk of damage to the teeth.